whether they're called hurricanes in the Atlantic or a typhoon in the Pacific or even a severe tropical cyclone. These are all basically the same weather event that develop over warm ocean water. This question is, how do you go from warm ocean water to something as destructive as a hurricane? And if it's also related to warm ocean water, if the oceans become even warmer, what will happen to the hurricanes themselves? Well, the first thing to say is like all weather events, a hurricane actually starts from something rather benign and rather common, like a small thunderstorm, which then pours in air from between the surface of the ocean and the bottom layer of the cloud. This warm, moist air is gathered from the surrounding area, goes to enlarging the thunderstorm. Now, if this was all that was happening, all you'd get is a rather large thunderstorm. However, the majority of these kind of seed hurricanes are found near the equator, anywhere from 5 degrees to 20 degrees latitude. These latitudes, the rotation of the Earth also plays a part in the storm's activity, causing them to slowly rotate. Once the storm has started to rotate, any new warm air joining the storm actually adds to the spin means that the longer the storm is over, warm water near the equator, the larger the storm gets and also the faster it spins. Next question then is, why does warm water of over 80 degrees Fahrenheit or around about 27 degrees centigrade play such an important part in the formation of the hurricane? Here we have to look at what's actually happening within the storm. It relates to the warm air which is over the warm ocean. The warmer the ocean, the warmer the air kind of sitting on top of the ocean. So warm air is sucked in at the base of the storm, it rises through the storm cloud. As it rises, also cools and releases moisture into the cloud. The speed at which it rises relates to how quickly it drops in temperature. It's a relatively small difference between the air temperature, the incoming air, and the temperature within the cloud. And the air will rise relatively slowly. The air is only rising relatively slowly, it in turn will only slowly suck in air from the surroundings, therefore the storm will only grow very slowly. However, the air coming in is very warm, the placement air will be sucked in rapidly, and the storm will rapidly grow into a large hurricane. This thing gives us a clue about how a hurricane can stop increasing in size or turn back into a normal thunderstorm falls into three basic categories. First being something called high altitude wind shear. It relates to the winds which occur very high up in our atmosphere, sometimes seen pushing the tops of a thunderstorm. With a hurricane, this wind shear can disrupt a hurricane to such an extent that it slowly falls apart. The extent is if the course of the hurricane takes it over cooler ocean water. So cooler air being added the hurricane can no longer maintain the incredible speed it once had and again slowly dies down. Unfortunately, the final way is to move over land. This time the hurricane fairly quickly loses energy and slows down. The additional problem here is that the winds have normally done severe damage to coastal communities before it slows down. And as the storm has now run out of its driving force, it can stall in one general location, dumping all the moisture has been sucked up whilst the hurricane was being created, causing flooding. Now the particular geography of the southwest coast of America and the Gulf of Mexico presents a rather large problem with this final method of slowing down a hurricane. Most of the hurricanes that hit America start as storms on the coast of Africa. They then travel across the Atlantic, turning into hurricanes. At this point, there are generally two paths that they can go. And skirt the kind of the eastern edge of the Caribbean, moving up the east coast of the USA till the cooler water slows them down, or they can cross the Caribbean islands into the Gulf of Mexico and hit the southern USA. This second path is a really major problem since the Caribbean islands themselves actually represent a rather small land mass. It means that when a hurricane passes over them, it causes severe damage to them as it passes. And whilst it does slow down a little bit by travelling over the islands, still going to be a hurricane when it reaches the other side. And once in the Gulf of Mexico, the hurricane is now once again over warm ocean water. So it starts to intensify once more until it makes landfall in the southern USA. In this way, the same hurricane can devastate 
two separate communities in one go. Now hurricane season of course is limited by the length of time the ocean water is warm enough to generate hurricanes. The number of storms in a particular year vary considerably. So this is due to when and where the original thunderstorms form, what prevailing winds blow, and that what happens to those storms as a result of those winds. However, as we've seen, the warmer the ocean water is, the more likely the hurricanes are to occur. Also, the larger, the more powerful they're likely to be. There are different factors which come into play in considering how warm the oceans are going to get. One key, of course, is solar activity. Now, the actual energy generated by the sun varies slightly over an 11 year cycle. This in turn can have a significant effect on ocean temperature. This means that the number and severity of hurricanes are also likely to vary over at least an 11 year cycle. So if you're looking for trends in hurricane activity, you really need to take a very long view beyond just looking at a couple of years. Brings me then to another factor, global warming. As human activity warms the atmosphere of the, our planet, the upper the part of the oceans also acts as a heat sink and absorbs some of that excess warmth. This of course results in warming oceans. There's no way to say that human activity directly caused a specific hurricane. However, what can be said is that human activity can be directly linked to making hurricanes generally more likely, and also for them being more severe than otherwise would be the case. Now looking over hurricane trends for the last 150 years, the hurricanes have been increasing in number and severity in general over that time. They have fluctuated considerably in individual years. The trend is worrying for the future of hurricane activity. So the less ocean temperatures are reduced, or for instance, we could tow an iceberg of the appropriate size right into the path of the developing hurricane. In areas next to warm ocean water, we may take additional precautions to mitigate the damage that are going to be caused by hurricanes and similar events in future years.